Coming up on Hunter News Now, President Biden announces a big plan to reduce student debt. We'll tell you what this means and what Hunter students think of the proposal. And how you can take your college studies overseas before you graduate. And later, we'll show you a new place to study and relax on campus. All that and more on this edition of Hunter News Now. Welcome to this semester's first broadcast of Hunter News Now. I'm Roseanne Peralta. And I'm Veronica Leshy. We begin with good news for CUNY students who have taken out loans for college. President Biden says his new loan relief plan will forgive $20,000 in student debt for Pell Grant recipients and up to $10,000 for non-Pell Grant recipients. It also includes a pause on their repayment deadline. To qualify, students must make no more than $125,000 a year or if married, no more than $250,000. CUNY's chancellor is excited about the new plan and on the university's website says, earning a degree should not mean spending years or decades repaying student loans. We applaud President Biden's commitment to higher education and to policies that reduce student debt and help college graduates release a quick, quicker return on their investment that leads them up the economic ladder. We also asked students what they thought of the new plan in this edition of Hunter Students Speak. I've had to pay around 20 grand in loans. I have like $30,000 in student loans, but I have no degree. We're loan regardless, just it's not very great. I, I'd say I'd have a very ne negative outlook on the whole thing. Yeah, I think it's I know that. I was really worried that I would have to like you know somehow like have to like pick up a loan at some point in my career because I I don't I, my family from where we come from like we're not like financially like you know like really good. <laughs> Single person in my family that's in school. So my mom's um, my mom and my sister are both doing doctorate degrees um, and they <laughs> they've accrued so much student loans. The people I know who have loans do it out of necessity. They are kind of thankful for the opportunity to get a loan because when you dorm, there's no like food plan or anything. So any money that you do have to pay out of pocket is literally just to survive. It's picking up courses that are really difficult, but because of the loans that they have, they are unable to focus. So I feel like um, Biden providing this help, it will really ease down the stress that they have, especially with, the, especially with my friends. It will really help them out. Because my father has good as he is. He didn't pay off his student loans until he was five years ago. Yeah. yeah. He's 45 now. So, I mean, these, this program, I believe, could reduce or even eliminate a lot of people's um, stress in terms of having to deal with this. Yeah. I think it's uh, going to be some I know that. While no student loans for some new Hunter students from Ukraine and Russia, thanks to the Zimmon Foundation and other friends of the college, 12 students fleeing the Russia-Ukraine war will now be able to continue their education at Hunter courtesy of a new scholarship. President Rab says Hunter is committed to helping people achieve the American dream and is proud to welcome these students this fall and next spring. If you want to take your education overseas, you're back in luck. Although the pandemic grounded foreign study for two years this fall, Hunter is relaunching its study abroad program. And as Raquel Miller reports, it is already in high demand. Stacks of applications are rolling in for study abroad in London, Tokyo and Melbourne. Director of Education Abroad Sarah Craver says applications are high, especially for seniors. I do think that study abroad is really in high demand this semester and this year because it simply wasn't possible before this in the past couple of years. Macaulay Honors Senior Jennifer Eisman is relieved it's an option again and is hoping to study in the United Kingdom this spring. Study abroad has been like my dream since I, before I started college. The study abroad office helps make those dreams come true. We support students quite a bit throughout the application process. So from identifying a program and getting advising on the, the different types of programs we have, all the way until you go abroad and even when you return. Hello. 
Spanish professor John Estrada encourages students to take advantage of any foreign study opportunity. You are going to be a better person, not only in an ethical factor, but in your goals, in your capacity to see the world, the life, the history, the events, the daily life. Students like Jennifer Eisman are already hearing if they have been accepted to study abroad next semester. Eisman just found out that she will be attending Queen Mary College in London. Reporting for Hunter News Now, I'm Raquel Miller. How exciting! Wouldn't you like to study in another country? Of course, I wouldn't mind going to Spain or France. It's like vacation and school at the same time. Who could say no to that? Of course. For people who didn't quite finish their degree, going back to school is now much easier thanks to, to a program called CUNY Reconnect. Chancellor Rodriguez helped launch the program that will help 10,000 New Yorkers return to the classroom this fall to finish up their studies. CUNY says as many as 700,000 New Yorkers may qualify for the program. Students who re-enroll in one of CUNY's colleges will, re will receive academic advising and help finding internships in hot fields like healthcare and tech. Well, with all these new students on campus, finding a place to study can be challenging, but here's a tip, head over to Hunter East. Just last month, Hunter reopened the East Building's fifth floor library, and students are now trading their corner of the Sky Bridge for a seat in the newly remodeled space. Michael Tamsar Yamet has more on the latest go-to study space on campus. A moment of celebration. Two, one. The Hunter community came together for the reopening of the East Building's fifth floor. In addition to the eighth floor terrace, Hunter has now renovated five floors of the library. With more classes in person this fall, Hunter President Jennifer Rabb believes the fifth floor will be a popular spot on campus. We want this to be your home away from home. We want you to feel secure as students, to be able to do your work in a beautiful, safe, welcoming environment. The new floor includes large wooden tables with charging outlets, tall padded seating for relaxation, and reservable study rooms for group work. So far, students seem to appreciate the new space. I do enjoy the kind of like somewhat dimmer lighting sometimes because it kind of reminds me of a cafe. It's very clean compared to all the other floors of the library. I hope it stays that way. I like the way that, uh, you know, the whole room is positioned with the books and everything just spaced out. It's got a nice modern feel to it. The floor also includes a new communal workspace for Hunter's librarians. We're hoping to see uh, these, these office spaces get some usage and um, also, you know, offer our library uh, faculty, our librarians and our library staff uh, more opportunities to cross paths with faculty um, inside of the library. Now the next part of the renovation project will be the second floor. Hunter encourages its students in the meantime to check out the fifth floor library where they can rest, maybe take a nap, or possibly read a book. Reporting for Hunter News Now, I'm Michael Tamsuriamit. Coming up after the break, Hunter's USG president Ariana Ahmed joins us in the studio. We'll ask her what she's working on and hear what the student government is doing to improve your Hunter experience. You don't want to miss it. Stay with us. Last May, more than 30 students ran for a leadership position in Hunter Student Government Association. Of the three candidates vying for the top position, students chose Ariana Ahmed, who ran on a Hunter United platform to become the new USG president. She joins us now in the studio to discuss her new role and what she hopes to accomplish in the new year. Welcome to the show, Ariana. Glad to be here. 
So one of the things you've helped address is food insecurity amongst Hunter students. You've worked with the Purple Apron Food Pantry. What other key issues are you working to help Hunter students with in your new role as USG president? Well, after food insecurity, we found that the biggest issue was coming back on campus and knowing how to socialize once again after the entire digital courses and asynchronous learning. We're, ha we're hoping to host more social events, more intercultural nights, multi-faith nights to help students find that connection and what it feels like to be on an actual campus again. And um, what makes you different from all the other presidents? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, one thing that I would like to say is that when I first started as a freshman, I had one semester here, and then it was all online. But even though it was all digital for me, I found ways to connect. I refounded the Mock Trial Society, and that gave me a very big avenue of connecting with students beyond our courses beyond just a Discord group chat. And I believe that going out of your way to make that community has been something I have not pioneered, but led many of the times. Okay, so um, just last week, the fifth floor library opened up and you were one of the speakers there. What does it mean to you to see Hunter's uh, infra infrastructure plans come to fruition? Um, as we increase in students, it's very, very important that we have space for the students that we're admitting. Seeing people have the space to sit down, have somewhere to drink their Starbucks coffee, or even study, you know, that's what a library is for. Uh, it's, it's been wonderful because a lot of general student body doesn't really have somewhere to go, unlike the communities that are part of the honors groups, or even student government, they all have a space. But it's nice to see that now everyone has a space. And it's already so crowded. <laughs> yeah. The pandemic impacted the lives of many, and um, the Hunter community was no exception. What is your message to the Hunter community, staff, faculty, and students for this new year? If the pandemic has taught us anything, that it is that New Yorkers are resilient. And that goes the same for Hunter College, being at the heart of New York City. I think even as commuters, even as people who dorm, we've shown again and again that we show up for each other, we show up for ourselves, and that we can always come back stronger when we have everything back in person. Well, thank you, Ariana, for stopping by and chatting with us. Of course. Thank you for having me. Coming up after the break, our sports anchor, Melina Jorge, joins us in the studio for your Hunter Sports Report. We'll also introduce you to our Scholar Athlete of the Week. Find out how she's making her mark, one slam dunk at a time. Stick around. One month into the school year so far, and the Hunter Hawks are winning big. Joining us in the studio to talk about their recent success is our sports anchor, Melina Agnes Jorge. Welcome, Melina. Thank you for having me. Hello, everyone. Let's start with women's tennis. So far this season, the women's tennis team is undefeated. They currently have an eight-match winning streak, and it looks like nothing can stop them. In their last two matches against both Bard and York College, they beat them easily with a score of 9-0, those big wins causing quite the racket. Their last two matches before heading to the CUNY Athletic Conference are on Thursday, October 13th against Lehman College at 3.30 p.m. and on Tuesday, October 18th against Baruch College at 3 p.m. We still don't know who the team will be facing in the CUNY Athletic Conference, but mark your calendars because their first match in the conference is on Sunday, October 23rd at the USTA National Tennis Center, right where the US Open is hosted. Let's now dive right into women's volleyball. During the fall season, the women's volleyball team has been winning left and right. Their record now stands at 12 wins and three losses. They are holding on to a seven game winning streak as they head into their next game against NYU right here on campus. They sure have a busy week as they have another game on Thursday, October 13th against Baruch College, which the Hunter Hawks are known for beating. 
The women's volleyball team is serving up some good stuff as they haven't lost a game in three weeks. And with a crowd full of supporters, nothing can stop them from competing at the CUNY Athletic Conference on November 1st. If you missed any of their games so far, it's never too late as they'll be playing two games a week all the way up until the end of October. I can tell you, the crowd is electrifying at these games, especially at home matches, which I'm sure the team gets a kick out of. Speaking of kicks, it's time to talk about the men's soccer team. These players have a goal to redeem themselves from last season. They are shooting to make it into the CUNY Athletic Conference. Their record is currently better than last year at five wins and seven losses. They are still hopeful as they only have three games left before their conference. Their next games are on Wednesday, October 12th at 2.30 p.m. against Medgar Evers College, Saturday, October 15th against the City College of New York, and on Wednesday, October 19th against John Jay College at 7 p.m. I checked out the team last week and let me tell you, the players are very passionate and they're constantly motivating each other on the field. I do have one more piece of news about a new face on the soccer field. His name is Dan Sinelli and he is the new head coach of the men's soccer team. I hear he is thinking and talking big. He wants to take the Hunter Hawks all the way to the CUNY championship. Since the 1990s, Sinelli has been playing and coaching soccer. With more than 30 years of experience, the players believe he is the perfect fit for the job. Like he has been like motivating us and like pushing us to actually like try to like do a lot better than we've actually been doing in the previous seasons. Hunter's soccer players, like Anama, see a trophy at the end of this season. They say Sinelli's new leadership has really helped the team improve both in practices and matches. Be sure to support all our fall athletes as this season ends in late October and early November when we get into the winter sports. Speaking of winter sports, the women's basketball team is getting ready for its first game, which is less than a month away. Last year, the Lady Hawks made it to the semifinals of the CUNYAC Championship thanks to players like Kimberly Lau. Lau was one of the season's leading scorers and will be back this year as a senior. Hunter News Now caught up with Lau to talk about how she got started in basketball and what it's like to be a scholar athlete. Basketball is not really like just like an individual sport, it's like obviously it's a team sport and so I really like that aspect of it. I'm Kimberly, I am a junior and I'm majoring in psychology. I would say I've been playing for around like 10 years, since when I was like 7 or 8 years old. I started playing like pick up ball at the park, you know, playing with my siblings especially. Um, yeah, and I think from that, like just that competitive nature, I guess, like with my siblings, like I really grew to like enjoy the sport. A lot of our team is like new, we have like freshmen, transfers, and so based on that, and like our chemistry, I think we're doing relatively well. My freshman year, I was very quiet and like timid just because like I knew that they were like upperclassmen that were like better than me and stuff like that. I didn't really want to say anything. I didn't want to like um, put my ideas out there. I was just very scared. But now it's like I kind of know what I'm doing, like what is expected of me. And so I try to like, just encourage my teammates and like lead them to become better and push them to be like, better than me, you know. Being a student athlete, there's a lot of sacrifices that you have to make. Um, for me, like, I stay from a hunter from, like, from, like, 10 to, like, 8. Um, so even after my practices, I'm always here just studying. And, like, thankfully, like, I'm... Um, I'm staying at home so my parents like they cook and stuff like that and so like I just come home and I um, enjoy just family time and stuff like that but it is hard just like trying to manage and be like disciplined in my studies. I'm trying to be a physical therapist so right now I'm just taking all the classes that I need for PT school and yeah I'm gonna be applying to PT school soon so. Yeah. Well, the teams really do look great this year, Melina. They really are, and it's even better to see them in person. 
If they keep this up, I have high hopes they'll win some championships for us this year. I agree. Thank you for joining us today in the studio. Thank you. I'll see you next week. Well, coming up on Hunter News Now, CUNY's TV station makes history. I will show you how to look your best on camera. We'll be right back. CUNY TV breaks its own record. The television channel received 19 nominations for the 2022 New York Emmy Awards. That's an all-time high. Nine of CUNY TV's shows were recognized, including the Latinas program. Host Tina Beth Pina says the nominations are significant not only for the channel, but for all of CUNY. It's about showcasing what the university is all about, all the wonderful things that we're doing and all the wonderful things that the community at large which is, you know, CUNY, the City University of New York, and what's going on in our community. CUNY TV ended up taking home seven Emmy Awards during the official ceremony just last Saturday. Among the winners were the channels Urban U, Nueva York, and I Am a Dreamer programs, bringing CUNY's total number of Emmys up to 35. And if you want to watch a rerun of this year's ceremony, you can check it out at www.nyemmys.org. As you know, Veronica, TV is a visual medium and it's important to look good on camera. Lucky for us, our Hunter News Now team got some professional advice last week. Celebrity makeup artist Remy Gaffney came to campus to explain how to use makeup for a classic look. Gabriel Acevedo has more on Remy's top tips and tricks to look your best on camera. But you want to do it like in the center, upper part of the nose, not on the tip. The tip does nothing good for your appearance and just looks like, oh look, I have highlighter on my nose. From foundation to blush, Rami Gaffney's goal as a makeup artist is to make his clients look their best. I never liked the word makeover because it sounds like you're making someone over. I like the idea of enhancing someone. So you're not changing them. It's the same equation for everybody. Every single person on the planet, the beauty equation is the same. Here, Gaffney is teaching journalism students about how makeup can help them look their best on air, which is good for news. He stresses the importance of blending makeup for a natural look on camera. Less is more when it comes to makeup. So if you sometimes you'll put too much on um, because you think that it'll make you look better, like Remy said, but then it just makes you look cakey and cheap, and nobody wants to look cheap, especially on TV. Whether it's promoting his online shop and makeup products or helping his clients create their perfect look, Remy hopes they remember one thing. Minimum makeup, maximum impact. Gabriel Acevedo, Hunter News Now. Well, I don't know about you, Veronica, but that session definitely helped me get ready this morning. Definitely. I'm walking away with a new motto. Minimum makeup, maximum impact. And that's all for this edition of Hunter News Now. You can check out all of our student stories on our YouTube channel, Hunter College Journalism. And be sure to follow us at Hunter Journ on Twitter, also at Hunter J-O-U-R-P-G-M on Instagram. On behalf of everyone in the studio, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.